Is it scientifically valid to assert that a daily teaspoon of Ceylon cinnamon alone can cure diabetes? And are there thorough studies backing the specific anti-diabetic claims made in Eric Berg's video? In this video, I will talk about one of the most consequential fake advices about diabetes. He said claims that cinnamon can cure peripheral neuropathy and reduce brain inflammation are unsupported by strong clinical evidence. He warned that promoting cinnamon as a substitute for diabetes medications is misleading and could be dangerous. As usual, I'll fact-check each main point he made, based on scientific facts only. Let's start with his first claim. I'm going to recommend you take one teaspoon of this very certain spice to help you greatly with diabetes. Now, when I say the word fix diabetes, what I'm really going to talk about is how to fix the complications of diabetes. I a single spice cannot fix the complex complications of diabetes, as he misleadingly suggests. While limited studies indicate potential blood sugar benefits from cinnamon, it fails to address root issues like neuropathy, retinopathy, and cardiovascular problems that require a comprehensive treatment approach with medication, diet modifications, and lifestyle changes. You should be wary of oversimplified claims that a spice can resolve diabetes complications, which ignores the intricacies of the disease and may perpetuate misconceptions about its proper management, especially given the lack of robust scientific evidence significantly linking spices to improve diabetes outcomes. And so it has some fascinating uh, research, which I will put down below that I just kind of got sucked into for hours and just, I'm like, just I'm blown away. You know, cinnamon is the most consumed spice in the world. And actually it's the oldest spice that was consumed uh, from quite a few different cultures. Black pepper, not cinnamon, is the most consumed spice globally. And while cinnamon has historical significance and widespread use, his statement that it is the singular oldest spice consumed across multiple cultures is inaccurate as spices like cumin and coriander have also been used since ancient times. So you should be aware that such conclusions are misleading without precise historical and consumption data to support them. So what does it do? Well, it's an anti-inflammatory, it's antimicrobial, uh, and kill microbes, as well as candida overgrowth and other parts of the body. It also has anti-cancer properties, but the big benefit that I wanna talk about is the- Cinnamon does not have proven anti-cancer effects, as current research is inconclusive and largely based on in vitro or animal studies, which do not necessarily apply to humans. He lacks strong scientific support for cinnamon's ability to address candida overgrowth, with most studies highlighting its general antimicrobial properties rather than specific impacts on candida. While cinnamon might help manage blood sugar levels, calling it anti-diabetic oversimplifies its role. Human studies indicate it could improve insulin sensitivity or lower fasting blood glucose, but these results are not consistently observed across all research, necessitating more comprehensive clinical trials. So you're going to have less fat in your liver. That's a cool benefit. Number four, it actually has protective benefits in the kidney. So if your blood sugar is high and you're taking cinnamon, it can protect the kidney from all the problems that occur. I mean... His suggestion that cinnamon reduces liver fat is not well supported by robust scientific evidence, as research results have been inconsistent and frequently based on animal models rather than human studies. You should be aware that data is limited and inconclusive regarding cinnamon's potential to protect against kidney damage related to high blood sugar, with most studies focusing on its impact on blood sugar control instead of kidney health, so additional rigorous trials are necessary to confirm these assertions. Okay, four lies and zero facts so far. Before we go on, has cinnamon helped you manage diabetes? Share your experiences in the comments below. Next. Think about sugar as being like rust. It's oxidizing, it's rusting out the different parts of your body. Now, what is a kidney? A kidney is a filter of your blood. So it gets hammered. So this is why a diabetic usually ends up with kidney problems. But if you could- He inaccurately describes sugar's effect on the body as rusting. High blood sugar indeed harms organs like the kidneys, but it doesn't oxidize or rush them. Oxidation involves a reaction with oxygen, which isn't the case here. Instead, diabetes-related damage arises from glycation, where sugar binds with proteins and lipids, disrupting their function. This process can harm your kidneys by stressing blood vessels due to elevated glucose levels, not through an oxidation process similar to rusting. And there is a good remedy that I like to use called benfotamine and alpha lipoic acid, but cinnamon is another one you could use. So again, what diabetes is doing to the nerve, it's 
killing the circulation, the blood vessels, the capillaries to the nervous system. So the nerves need a blood supply. So that's what diabetes is doing. Diabetes-induced neuropathy develops from microvascular damage that impairs blood flow to nerves, causing them to degenerate. Benfoshamine, a thiamine derivative, and alpha-lipoic acid, an antioxidant, have demonstrated potential in reducing oxidative stress and improving nerve function. The role of cinnamon remains inconclusive due to a lack of sufficient empirical evidence supporting its effectiveness in managing neuropathy. So guess what? Cinnamon can actually prevent or protect endothelial uh, cells. Number seven, it can decrease the risk of cataracts, okay? Diabetes is the number one cause of blindness. The evidence does not robustly support the notion that cinnamon protects endothelial cells or reduces your risk of cataracts, as while some studies hint at potential antioxidant properties that could theoretically benefit endothelial health, the research is far from conclusive, and his claims linking cinnamon to decreased cataract risk lack solid scientific backing. So even though diabetes is a top cause of blindness, primarily through diabetic retinopathy, confidently promoting cinnamons. Protective effects without strong evidence is misleading. More rigorous studies are needed to validate these ideas. But with diabetes, you also get cataracts, glaucoma, and uh, there's a whole list of eye problems that can occur. All right, number eight, because you're lowering glucose and lowering insulin, you're going to have less lipid accumulation. And number nine, less inflammation in your brain. Why? Because cinnamon is an anti-inflammatory. Mm. Cinnamon does not significantly lower glucose and insulin levels to the extent that it prevents lipid accumulation or brain inflammation, as current scientific evidence does not robustly support these effects. While some research indicates cinnamon might modestly affect blood sugar, these impacts are not sufficient to broadly avert lipid buildup or inflammation, and the mechanisms involved remain poorly understood and inconsistently demonstrated in clinical studies. Attributing broad anti-inflammatory benefits to cinnamon oversimplifies complex metabolic interactions, necessitating more rigorous evidence from controlled studies to confirm any definitive health advantages related to lipid and brain inflammation reduction. So we have seven fake claims and one real fact. Claiming a teaspoon of cinnamon cures diabetes is not just false but dangerously misleading, risking serious health issues by ignoring proven treatments. Always remember, a popular video doesn't mean it's accurate. Thanks for watching, hit like and subscribe, take care and keep the faith.